Hello everyone. Welcome to the course titled Understanding Human Being Nature and Existence Comprehensively. This course is also called as UHV3 and as the name suggests, you have enrolled for this course after having gone through UHV1 and UHV2. If you recollect, if UHV1 was one of the modules of the induction program where we had taken a look at the aspirations and concerns of a human being, particularly during student life. And we try to discuss those aspirations and concerns and also try to get resolved through our own exploration. In which we too, we took a look at the basic human aspiration of a human being, and that is continuity of happiness and prosperity. And we saw how the basic aspiration of every human being can be fulfilled by understanding and living in harmony at all the four levels. And towards the end of the course, we also discuss the ethics in profession. Now this course called as Understanding Human Being, Nature and Existence Comprehensively will help you explore further and deeper about all these issues. So we discussed that human being is coexistence of self and body. Now we'll see that self is central to human being. So unless I'm having the right understanding of the self, understanding my conduct as a human being becomes difficult. So how to understand the self in detail? Similarly, we had talked about the nature, its four orders earlier. Now we'll see how the whole nature is submerged in space and what this submergence means. And we'll also be able to see that the submergence of nature in space called as coexistence is central to existence. And with this understanding, we'll be able to have a look at the human conduct. So we can see that the role of human being in this entire existence is to understand the coexistence, to have the feeling and thought of coexistence and to live accordingly. So welcome to the new journey through this course. So you can see on the slide in front, the course is coded as UHV3 and is titled as Understanding Human Being, Nature and Existence Comprehensively. And this is the first module of the course. The first module of the course is dedicated towards introducing the course. And in the first lecture, we'll have an overview of the course. Now, looking at the course objectives, the first and foremost objective is to help the students have the clarity about human aspirations, goal, activities, and purpose of life. So all of us have multiple aspirations in life, isn't it, as a student of a professional course, you must have multiple aspirations. So how can we have the clarity about these aspirations? So all of you want to become something, you want to do something, you want to get something, but the, at the essence, you want to be something as a human being. What is that state of being that you basically aspire for? We had discussed earlier about this, but we'll take a deeper look at that. We'll also see that with this clarity of human aspiration, we can understand the human goal. Now, you might be remembering that while living in a society, we all have a common goal. Now, how that goal can be understood, can be fulfilled. We try to understand that. Now, we'll also see the activities that are involved in our living. So human being, as we had discussed earlier, is coexistence of self and body. So as we talk about a human being, there are two entities to be addressed. One is the self and the other is the body. So there are some activities going on in the body. There are some activities going on in the self. So can we understand these activities in detail? Now, earlier we had a look at the activities of the self and there we had talked about some of the activities. Now in this course, we'll talk about all the activities of the self and see how harmony can be ensured among all these activities. And with this, you can have the clarity about the purpose of life. So we all are having some purpose in life, isn't it? Can that purpose be understood with clarity? Can this purpose be common to all human beings? Is that possible to understand? What would be your purpose? Can you make out? So as we go along, we'll see how we can understand the goal, the activities and the purpose of life. Now we want to have a fulfilling life, a life full of happiness and a feeling of prosperity. Now, how this prosperity is to be achieved, how this happiness is to be achieved. Can we have happiness in continuity? 
So we'll discuss about this. The next objective is to facilitate the competence to understand the harmony in nature or existence and participation of human being in the nature and existence. Now, we as human beings are a unit in nature. And there are so many units in nature. The nature is collection of units. And as we had discussed earlier that all these units are there in the nature in four orders, the physical order, the bio order, the animal order, the human order. We are there in the human order. But along with us, there are birds, animals, which fall in the animal order. There are plants and trees which go to the bio order. And then there is soil, air, water, so many atoms and molecules which are there in the physical order. Now, if you observe, there's something else too in the existence and that is space. All these units of nature are there in space. Space which is all pervading, which is there everywhere which is inside every unit and outside every unit. So we'll try to see how we can understand the whole existence and we can also see what could be our participation in this entire nature and existence. So we are participating anyway. We are participating with human beings. We are participating with birds and animals. We are participating with plants and trees. We are also participating with the units of physical order. So what would be the participation that is naturally acceptable to me? So this is something that we discuss, the participation of human being. And thirdly, the goal is to help the students develop the understanding of human tradition and its various components. Now you see, this tradition is something that we aspire for. Can we have a tradition of happiness and prosperity on this planet? Generation by generation, how do we achieve that? Now, very good thing with the current civilization is that we have education which is available everywhere, almost to every student, every child. Now, if we can empower that education with inputs, which can ensure the right understanding and right feeling, then gradually, generation by generation, we can have a society which has a human tradition of happiness and prosperity. And what would be its various components? So we'll discuss about all this. Now, let us have a look at the course methodology. The methodology of this course is explorational and thus universally adaptable. So you must have seen in UHV1 as well as UHV2 that the complete delivery of the course is in the form of proposals and you are empowered, you are uh, facilitated to explore the whole content. So whatever I'm seeing from my side is a proposal for you to verify, to investigate, to validate in your living. And that is how exploration takes place. So it involves a systematic and rational study of the human being vis-a-vis -vis the rest of his existence. So we are going to talk about the human being. We are going to talk about human-human relations. We are going to talk about all the entities of nature. We are going to talk about space. But everything that we share from this platform is going to be in the form of proposals. And you must have observed that there is something called natural acceptance in each one of us, based on which when I go to verify, I'm able to get very genuine answers. A very relevant question that we have been asking you time and again. If I ask you, what is naturally acceptable to you? Feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? Try to find out. What is naturally acceptable to you? And just try to see from where did you get this answer? So you'll see that there is an innate faculty in each one of us that is called as natural acceptance. When I refer any such question, any such proposal to my natural acceptance, I get very genuine answers. And I'm sure you must have been able to say that what you naturally accept is the feeling of relationship. When you're living, you might be having opposition. You might be having opposition okay, with one or two or many people. But if you ask yourself what is acceptable to you naturally, you get the same answer, feeling of relationship. That particular innate faculty of each one of us is the natural acceptance and we are going to address it time and again. You will also see that whatever we are sharing in this course is free from any dogma or any set of do's and don'ts. So we are not going to prescribe anything for you. We are not going to say that this is right, that is wrong. 
okay this you should be doing that you shouldn't be doing there are no do's and don'ts here no prescriptions what is basically expected is that you listen to the whole proposal try to reflect upon it so i'll say that my task is very simple my task is just to propose the content to you and the rest is your task to listen to the complete proposal and then to verify the proposal to refer it to your natural acceptance also to validate in your living the more you are able to verify within yourself and validate in your living it becomes a part of your understanding now how do you validate so to validate you try to live accordingly in behavior you try to live accordingly and see whether it is resulting into mutual happiness or not whether it is resulting into mutual prosperity or not and mutual happiness means that i am able to ensure my happiness as well as happiness of the other mutual prosperity means i am able to ensure prosperity for myself as well as of the fulfillment of the rest of nature i am able to ensure prosperity for me as well as fulfillment of the rest of nature now when i am able to see within me that yes this is what is acceptable to me naturally and when i go to live it ensures happiness for everyone it ensures prosperity for everyone every entity of the nature it becomes a part of my understanding so it is a process of self investigation and self exploration and not of giving sermons there are no sermons here whatever is found as truth or reality is stated as a proposal and the students are facilitated and encouraged to verify in their own right based on their natural acceptance and subsequent experiential validation something that had that i had been uh, referring to and i hope you are quite acquainted with this process and will be referring to the same process and you will see that even after you complete the course this process has to continue because this is the process that will enable the understanding in you in completeness this process of self exploration takes the form of a dialogue between the teacher and the students to begin with and then to continue within the student leading to continuous self evolution so a dialogue has started between me and you of course i am connected to you through this video i am just raising some pertinent questions of your life but the more you try to uh, reflect upon those topics of the on those issues the more you try to reflect upon those issues you are able to see the reality so the dialogue gets initiated between me and you but gradually you will find that it takes the shape of a dialogue within your own self and there are two realities associated with each one of us one is what i am and the other is what i really want to be now what i am includes my thoughts my behavior my work pattern okay the way i fulfill my relation with my with the human beings with the rest of nature all those things my current state of being and what i really want to be what does that mean that is my natural acceptance and you see that in this process as you go along exploring within yourself you get evolved as a human being you can see transformation in your behavior in your work pattern in your thoughts in your feelings and the more we get transformed within us we develop as a human being isn't it this is what we desire to be as a human being we want to be in a state in which i want to continue now how to ensure that that is the whole issue so this self exploration also enables you to critically evaluate your preconditionings and present beliefs now we might be preconditioned in multiple ways preconditioning means something that i have assumed to be true without verification that is my preconditioning so with the preconditionings we might have certain beliefs and that we have been nurturing it may be the case without verification for example one may tend to assume that money is everything one may tend to assume that there is struggle for survival and only the fittest can survive isn't it one may tend to assume that unless you oppose others unless you try to get over others you cannot progress in life now we might try to work in these ways but if you ask yourself is this acceptable to you naturally try to find it out so this is the methodology of the course 
am to i am going to share something from my side and help you ask pertinent questions to yourself there will be assignments also that will follow after the lectures if you go through the assignments they will help you even explore further and deeper to what is being said here so the process for right understanding is self exploration something that i have been referring to so whatever is stated is a proposal and do not assume it to be true or false now what we generally do if i am saying something that matches your thoughts you assume it to be true if it doesn't match your thoughts you assume it to be false but will this take us anywhere if i just keep on assuming without verification will it take me anywhere certainly not isn't it for example if i say that nobody is trustworthy and you assume that this is true what will happen ultimately if i say that everybody is trustworthy and you assume it to be true what will happen ultimately will it ever help you transform so you have to understand the reality and what is essentially required is to verify how to verify we are going to talk about it something that i mentioned earlier also so there is a proposal that is being put forward by me and you have to verify on the basis of your natural acceptance and the second part is verification through your own experience so if you look at the process for right understanding that is the self exploration and as i mentioned earlier that whatever is stated here is a proposal and no need to assume it as true or false so there is no achievement in assuming anything as true or false maybe i tell you that everybody is trustworthy and you assume it to be true will it help you anyway if i tell you that nobody is trustworthy and you again assume it as true will it help you anyway not at all unless you verify within yourself what trust means what is my intention what is the intention of the other this is not going to help you understand so you have to verify on your own right now how to verify on your own right so whatever is being said here is a proposal so the first task is to listen to the proposal now in this whole content i am going to use similar words that we have been using in our conversation but they might be carrying a different meaning for example this word happiness we keep on using the word happiness but if we try to conduct a survey we will see that different people assume happiness in different ways so how do i verify what is happiness so the first thing would be to listen to what is being said in terms of happiness that is the listening part and then the verification part you verify it on your own right and when you go to verify on your own right you refer the proposal to your natural acceptance and the second thing is experiential validation experiential validation means living accordingly so as i was mentioning when i go to live accordingly i interact with human beings that becomes my behavior and i try to see whether it is resulting in my happiness as well as happiness of the other similarly i try to work with the rest of nature and i try to make out whether this is resulting in mutual prosperity that is prosperity for me as well as for the rest of nature so the same example of trust if i have trust within me for the other it gives me happiness when i interact with the other with a feeling of trust it gives happiness to the other also so i can see that if i understand that trust rightly it ensures my happiness as well as happiness of the other so within me it is acceptable to me naturally and when i go to live accordingly it ensures mutual happiness so that becomes a part of my right understanding similarly when i interact with the nature say plants and i understand what plants are and i'm able to see my fulfillment my interaction my participation with the plants and then i interact accordingly so i fulfill the needs of the body in that process and i also fulfill the rest of nature the plants in that process and that ensures mutual prosperity so the understanding of my participation with plants becomes a part of my right understanding this is the way we go along while verifying while understanding now you have to find out which process is naturally acceptable to you a process of self exploration self verification on your own right leading to understanding in yourself or a process of do's or don'ts 
in which you assume what is said without verification try to find out so you can pause here a bit explore and verify so what do you think which process is acceptable to you naturally the first one or second one and i do hope that what you would say is the first process and the process of self verification so very nice so this is going to be the process for right understanding now looking at the course syllabus there are five modules in the course the first module is the introduction part where we'll talk about the basic human aspiration its fulfillment through all encompassing resolution so the basic human aspiration as we mentioned it has to be understood clearly we had discussed about this basic aspiration as continuity of happiness and prosperity now we'll make it more sharp now we'll make it sharper by saying that the basic human aspiration is continuity of happiness and we'll see how the feeling of prosperity is a part of the feeling of happiness in continuity then we we'll also see how it's going to be fulfilled so we had looked earlier at the four levels of our living and we had explored how harmony can be ensured at all these four levels now we'll have a different look at the process for fulfillment we we'll try to have a look at it and we see that this human aspiration is going to be fulfilled by all encompassing resolution now what it all means we'll try to discuss about this we'll have a, a thorough discussion on that the second module is about the right understanding that is knowing and we'll see who is the knower what is to be known and what is the process of knowing the third module is towards understanding the human being earlier we had seen that human being is coexistence of self and body now we'll see in depth what self means how self coexists with the body the body being a material entity the self being a conscious entity can this self be understood the more you understand the self you are able to see that the self is central to human existence now to understand the self we need to understand the activities of the self we had briefly discussed about the activities of the self earlier now we'll try to understand all the activities of the self so we'll see that there are two blocks of activities in the self one termed as block b1 which is the domain of knowing dimension of knowing the other block is block b2 the dimension of imagination now this block b1 has to be activated the dimension of knowing has to be activated we'll discuss about this in module 4 we'll try to understand the nature and existence you already have an idea of what nature is what space is what submergence is but now we'll take a deeper look at this in fact this submergence is the core of right understanding if i am able to realize this submergence of entire nature in space my understanding gets complete and how to accomplish we'll talk about that and finally we'll have a look at the human conduct the all encompassing resolution and the holistic way of living so based on this understanding what would be my role in my family in the society in the nature in the entire existence and how this all encompassing resolution can go from one generation to another generation forming a human tradition and how a holistic way of living emerges out of that so we'll discuss about it so the module 1 where we have this introduction so the basic human aspiration can their fulfillment through right understanding and resolution right understanding and resolution as the activities of the self so we'll see what resolution means how the self gets resolved self being central to human existence the all encompassing resolution for a human being its details and solution of problems in the light of resolution most of the time we we'll see that we are talking about problems and we also try to work out some feasible solutions it might be surprising somewhat humorous also to listen to this isn't it can we have an all encompassing solution to all the problems first of all we have to understand what solution means we will also see that the problem is basically the lack of understanding of the solution so if i have the all encompassing solution me i do not enter into problems there could be situations outside but i do not enter uh, into problems at the level of the self because i am resolved i am able to see my participation my role 
with the other entities. So in the light of resolution, we'll see how this, all the problems can be resolved. In module two, we'll talk about right understanding, that is knowing. Now, who is the knower? Can you make out who is the knower? Is it the self, the body, or the physiochemical entities? What do you think? The self? Yes. So we'll talk about it. What is to be known? Try to find out. What is to be known? So I need to know the human being. I need to know my family. I need to know the society around. I need to know the entire nature. We have, we have these uh, birds and animals, soil, air, water, plants, trees. Okay, the entire existence is to be known. And the process of knowing. Okay, so we'll uh, have a look at three words, contemplation, understanding, and re realization. So what contemplation means, we'll discuss that. What understanding means, what realization means. The domain of right understanding starts from understanding the human being, that is the knower, the experiencer, and the doer. So I am the knower, I am the experiencer, and I am the doer. Knower means the one who is going to understand. Experiencer means the one who becomes happy or unhappy. And doer means one who makes the decisions. It's not the body, it's the self. And you'll see that this right understanding extends up to understanding the entire nature and existence. It's interconnectedness. You'll be able to appreciate that there's interconnectedness and coexistence in this existence. The nature is not a struggle. The nature is interconnected, mutually fulfilling. You'll have to understand that. And finally, the role of human being in this existence, that is the human conduct. In module three, we'll go to understand the human being. And that means understanding the human being comprehensively as the first step and the core theme of this course. So the core theme of this course is understanding the human being. The more clarity I have about myself, about my coexistence with the body, I'm able to understand my relationships better. I'm able to understand my role in the society better. I'm able to understand my role in my organization better. We have already talked about this human being as coexistence of self and body. And look at the activities and potentialities of the self. The basis for harmony or contradiction. So what do you think? What is the basis for harmony or contradiction? Am I inherently in contradiction or is it due to some preconditionings in me? Is it due to some dependence on sensations that I get from the body for happiness in me? How to ensure harmony in the self in continuity? Next, we'll have a comprehensive understanding about the existence. So we'll go to discuss nature and existence. Nature being included, the need and process for inner evolution through self-exploration, self-awareness, and self-evaluation. Now there are three things here, self-exploration, self-awareness, and self-evolution. So as I explore within me, I become more and more aware of what I am, my current state of being, my thoughts, my desires, my expectations, the way I am dependent on fulfilling my expectations on something from outside, the way I'm preconditioned to think in a particular way. So you'll see that in this process of self-exploration, you become aware of your current state of being. So that is self-awareness. And with the exploration and awareness in place, you are able to evaluate yourself precisely. You'll see that most of the time, we assume that the problems are due to others. Most of the time, we try to look outside for solution of problems. But you'll see that the problems are not outside. The problems are there inside. The same situation may be there, but if I'm resolved, I'm able to find out the solution. I'm no longer in problems. That is the meaning of being totally resolved. And that is possible by awakening to the activities of self. The activities that I was mentioning, realization, understanding, and contemplation. These activities have to be activated. Potential is there, but they have to be activated. And they get activated by realization of coexistence, by understanding of harmony in the nature, 
and contemplation of participation of human in this harmony and order leading to comprehensive knowledge about the existence so we'll go about understanding all these words their differences in their meanings and how to ensure that and finally in the fifth module we'll go to understand the human conduct the all encompassing resolution and the holistic way of living so we'll look at the different aspects of this all encompassing resolution understanding wisdom science etc now this understanding when it gets ensured in me ensures wisdom in me and then at the level of thought i am able to make out the signs of fulfillment of my basic aspiration now with this understanding we are able to make out the holistic way of living for human being with all encompassing resolution covering all the dimensions of human endeavor that is realization thought behavior and work now these are the four dimensions of every human being the realization is basically the dimension of knowing thought is the dimension of imagination behavior is my interaction with human beings and work is my interaction with the rest of nature and how this can lead to harmony at all levels from self to the entire existence nature being a part of it so this is the complete syllabus of the course so these are the reference books to be referred in this course you must have gone through the book called a foundation course in human values and professional ethics it has a textbook as well as a teachers manual by r r gaur r s thana and g p bagadia that is the second revised edition of 2019 and that that has been published by excel books then there are class notes on understanding human being nature and existence comprehensively that we are going to share through email to you and they are also available on this website there are ppts for this course which are also available on the website there are also video lectures available and the link of the video lectures will be shared with you in every mail that you receive there is a book called avartan shil arth shastra written in hindi by shri a nagraj then there is a book called economy of permanence a quest for social order based on non violence by j c kumarappa there is another book by ivan elich called as energy and equity that was published in 1974 a very good book there is another book ishadi na upanishad by shankaracharya published by geeta press gorakhpur then there are few more books by shri a nagraj written in hindi manav vyahar darshan manvi samvidhan uh, there is also a book called vyaharvadi samashastra and vyaharatmak janvad written on the bottom of the list then we have mahasati pathan sutra by shri s n goenka there is an interesting book small is beautiful a study of economics as if people mattered by shumaker uh, and there is another book slow is beautiful by cecil andrews then there is another book science and humanism towards a unified world view written by dr p l dhar and dr r r gaur then we have the book shri guru granth sahib ji by shiromani gurudwara prabandhak committee and there is another book called samman suktam by jinendra varani ji so there are so many books you can refer to any or all of them and we'll get a lot of insight into what is being said here uh, the core content will be shared with you through course handouts and this is all in lecture 1 of module 1 and i hope so in this lecture we had a look at the course objectives the course methodology the syllabus of the course and finally we discussed the list of reference books so i hope this gives you enough idea about the complete content of this course